What's going on, Maskaholics? Well, today the mailman brought me a couple more additions to my Death Studios collection that were really, really awesome. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to highlight some of that company's fabulous work. Got my rogues gallery here. And pretty soon, Carnage and Possessed Tor will be joining the lineup. I just ordered them a few days ago, so they should be here sometime within the next three weeks. I'm super excited about that, but for now, let's get in and take a look at all these fantastic, awesome, ghoulish masks. First, we've got my custom Gremlin. Pretty cool looking. This was um, done by, I think, I think the guy's name is Pete Infeliz or Infeles or something like that. And John Smith is a collaboration between the two of them. It's a really, really great mask. This mask is normally green, but I had Jeff painted a, uh, like, you know, tannish flesh color for me because, you know, a lot of the Death Studios masks are green and I didn't want to have, like, you know, ten green monsters sitting on the shelf. And I think this is a pretty cool color for them. And someday I might add some hair to them so it'll look more like the, the monster from the end of Big Trouble in Little China, who was obviously the inspiration for this guy. But this is a really, really superb mask. It's pretty expensive though. It cost me like, with shipping and everything, it was like 120 bucks. But it was totally worth it. This is like one of the coolest masks in my collection. And he definitely makes a statement when you see him on the shelf. Got these really fantastic looking teeth. Great looking tongue and everything. Paint works really cool. Super, super thick on black latex. Everything's first rate about this guy. Like I said, it's really cool how he didn't like charge me anything extra to paint them a special color. I think that's a great feature that Death Studios has. Like, Jeff Death will paint these dills like pretty much any color you want. If you just ask for like a normal dill like I did, if you if you want like a bunch of special stuff, he, I think he charges extra, but, or if you pick like some bizarro color that he normally doesn't use, like yellow or something, but if you do, just go, I want this green mask painted, you know, blue like one of your vampires or something, he'll, he'll do that for no extra charge, and I think that's really, really cool how you can get a mask that's kind of custom and different from the ones that everyone else has. Next to him is the legendary Shock Monster, sculpted by John Smith. It's really, really fabulous. The hair is really, really great. I've never really got a Death Studios mask with hair. They do a pretty excellent job of hairing their masks. My only minor quibble about the the hair on Death Studios masks is like every mask that has hair has the same hairdo. But it's a pretty rad looking hairdo. And like I said, the quality of the hair is really great. There's like a lot of, uh, you know, subtle shades to it. Like on camera, it probably just looks black, but there's a lot of like browns and some white and stuff in it. So it, it looks really, really great. This is a super, super cool mask. I love all the cuts and everything. And the eye is really cool. I especially think these uh, veins around the whites of his eyes here look really, really great. This is a cool, cool version of the 60s uh, Top Stone mask. This is probably one of the best versions of them. It's a little more realistic looking than some of them. You know, this is like the Shock Monster if you use a little more anatomically correct, but I don't know, I'm pretty blown away by this mask. I, I thought the Gremlin was going to be like my favorite mask, but I kind of really really like the shock monster not to say that there's anything wrong with the gremlin he's super cool too but this is a really really fabulous mask it is a little thinner than like the heavy duty ones you know like this guy and mr barlow here the latex isn't as 
is uh, thick on them where they're not as elaborate of masks as like the Gremlins, like these huge ones. He uses like really, really thick latex to keep them from collapsing in on themselves, but on these more medium sized ones, he doesn't go as hardcore, but it's still pretty thick. It's about as thick as a quarter. If you can see the thickness of it, but it's way more sturdy than like a your average tots mask. And I'm just going to quickly go over these ones because I've already done videos of them. There's Mr. Barlow by John Smith. Nosferatu. I'm not sure if John Smith did this one or not. It doesn't really say on the website, I don't think. But this is a great, great version of Nosferatu. This is the Trick or Treat Studios version of Cthulhu. I um, added a pretty deep wash to it to make it look more like the one you could order from Death Studios like in the 90s. But this is a really great mask and I only paid like 35 bucks for it so it looks you know comparable to the to the other Death Studios masks like it fits in with the collection good. And I've got the old Green Gargantua by John Smith also. Another John Smith classic here, the Zombie Frankenstein. I need to get a few uh, Death Studios masks. They're actually by Jeff Death. He does really great ones too. Like the his version of Frankenstein's fantastic, and he did a really really great uh, pumpkin and some other ones like that that I'm going to be getting in the next few months. So these guys are really really cool, and uh. Last but not least, as an honorable mention, is the Trick or Treat Studios version of the Lord of the Pit. It's a cheaper mask. It's pretty thin latex and the paint's slightly irregular on mine, but I only paid like 25 bucks for them, so I'm pretty happy with them. This is a great, great mask for the price. It's really not too much worse than outside of the paint. It's not as cool as the ones that Jeff Death paints. This isn't a bad mask though. The paint works pretty decent on them and the thickness isn't too bad. It's only, you know, this is more like the thickness of a dime instead of a quarter, but it's still a pretty sturdy mask that keeps its shape really well. And I don't know, this is like one of my favorite masks, so. Anyways, if you're a hardcore mask collector, and you want a really, really fantastic mask. Death Studios pretty much makes like the the best masks out there. And yeah, they are a little expensive, like they're a hundred bucks or something, but you take into account that, uh, you know, like if you order a mask from Trick or Treat Studios, it's like $60 a lot of the time, and they want like $10 shipping. You know, I think these are kind of a better deal. You want a really, really quality mask, I suggest you go over to Death Studios if you can afford it and pick one of these guys up. You won't be sorry.